Good morning, everybody. Good morning, indeed. Thank you for being here at 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning, uh, particularly after, for some of us yesterday who were here all day, uh, a tiring, although happily tiring day, because there was a lot to work through and there was a lot to process and think about and consider and many questions I think appeared in my dreams last night, although I'm not sure how. Um, but I'm very, very delighted to be introducing Professor Tadashi Uchino this morning because what he has chosen to talk about takes us onwards with some of the questions and the discussions that emerged yesterday. Uh, for the benefit of those who were not here yesterday, the range of panelists and the keynote and the discussants afterwards took on questions and, in a way, struggles about locating dramaturgical thinking, let alone the dramaturg, as well as raising concerns about some of the ethics that are involved in not just performance making, but thinking through the choices and the decisions and the approaches that are being experimented and are being reiterated in performance making. And of course, the sphere is becoming less defined for better and for worse. And the histories and the ways of thinking through histories are also becoming more open to critique, to questioning, to disagreement. And so this question of theatre in the public space, in the public sphere, theatre not just in the public sphere, but as has been articulated, theatre as the public sphere and as the public space, is of increasing interest to us in ADN. And the platform of the festival, we are part of a festival in ADN, we are part of SIFA. Uh, and a couple of years ago, we engaged in dialogue with the previous festival director, Ong Keng Sen, in his festival dramaturgy uh, in a keynote interview, which I'm happy to say will be published later this year as an edited uh, transcript. So this question of theatre as assembly, radical dramaturgy in theatre commons, looking at a particular festival in Japan as a case study, is so apt, thank you. So to briefly introduce Professor Tadachi Uchino, who is a widely known performance studies scholar, whose border crossing informs a lot of his writing, a lot of his thinking, a lot of his work. And this border crossing is between Japan and the US, Japan and Europe, Japan and other parts of Asia, in particular India, where he has done a lot of thinking and writing about the interdisciplinary, the intercultural, working with academics, artists, activists, and his publications speak to this breadth of participation, research, and thinking. Uh, I won't go through the list of his publications, there are articles, there are books, but I will say that when I first read Crucible Bodies, post-war Japanese performance from Breck to New Millennium, in two th which was published in 2009 by Seagull Book, I thought, I hope one day I can write like that. Because it weaves his story and his journey as a performance scholar with the landscape of theater making in Japan and how these two things inform the perspectives and the lenses that he has derived and that he has developed. So thank you for that book and other books, but in particular I would encourage you uh, to look at that simply also because yesterday we had another way of expressing that in Janet's keynote, really, the, the intersections of a personal choice and, and the random and chance encounters with then a discerning and, and conscious approach to putting these things together. So the format is that 
The keynote will be about 40 minutes, after which we will take questions and uh, take the dialogue from there. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Professor Kadachamsha. Thank you, Shari. Uh, I was not really expected that, that she's going to raise such high expectations of me. And, uh, it's not really that. Uh, anyway, um, so what happens, uh, basically I am a critic, which means I talk about other people, <laughs> what other people are doing, and articulate what is happening in a theoretical frame. So I'm, in that sense, it's very traditional. Uh, and also yesterday there was a, the, the issue of the generation thing. I'm probably um, following um, Janet. I was Richard Schechner's uh, student in the middle of 1980s and still uh, uh, um, um, as a contributing editor to TDR. I mean, Richard has uh, retired from NYU, but he's still editing TDR and I am still a contributing editor, which, although I don't really contribute much because I now is choosing to write mainly in Japanese, um, not in English. But anyway, so today I'm only talking about the theater festival that is uh, happening uh, in, starting in 19, uh, 2017, uh, curated or dramaturged by uh, Soma Chiaki. Do you know her? Soma Chiaki? Chiaki Soma was the uh, artistic director of the Festival of Tokyo, the big one. Uh, and she lost that job, and now she's doing this very small scale uh, festival, which I think is very important in many respects. Not only because we will be losing money after the Olympics, that, that the, uh, the public funding will be uh, uh, decreased. So we really have to be thinking in the radical terms of reinventing the format of the, uh, the, the, the festival. But anyway, so, and I'm also acknowledging that Florian Malta, who is the, the curator, a uh, dramaturg uh, in Germany, I, he's mainly doing this, he's managing uh, Nature Theater of Oklahoma somehow in Germany, uh, the, uh, the US-based uh, theater company. But uh, he has written this article, Theater as Assembly, Fairs of Radical Imagination and Pragmatic Utopias for the last year's Taipei uh, Art Festival. And he, I asked him whether it came out or not, and it's not published yet. But, uh, so he gave me the final version, so I have to acknowledge that because I'm using a lot of that. Um, so this is the... Uh, any theater that understands itself as a space of assembly is inevitably confronted with the task of having to avoid false participation. That's the continuation of Janet's, uh, the end that she was talking about, SEA, uh, socially engaged arts uh, and uh, participation. False art participation, and at the same time, reclaim the idea of participation as such. A participation that aims for more than merely replacing one mode of tutelage with another. So, towards theater as assembly. Since the Occupy Wall Street movement of 2000, I have to read it, sorry. Concepts such as participation and assembly have been updated. Judith Butler, who participated in the movement itself, made headlines in some quarters when she published Performative Theory of Assembly. Uh, it's interesting, the Japanese translation uh, of assembly was, uh, was, is basically shukai, uh, the assembly in, in the Chinese characters, but the translators used the katakana, the uh, uh, Japanese syllabi used mainly for foreign words, uh, indicating that the, uh, uh, that the concept of butler's assembly was different from the one used in the past political movements. This is because since the anti-nuclear movement that began with the nuclear accident in Fukushima Daiichi uh, 2011, there has been a growing understanding that the meaning of public uh, demonstration and assembly has entered a phase different from that of conventional political demonstrations and gatherings. Florian Marzaha uh, tries to read the, the Butler's assembly back into problematics of theater, begins his argument in his theater assembly by quoting the Butler's, this very famous quote from her speech. It matters, I'm quoting, that as bodies we arrive together in public, as bodies we suffer, we require food and shelter, and as bodies we require of one another in dependency and desire. So this is a politics of the public body, the requirements of the body its movement and its voice. We sit and stand and move as the popular will. 
the one that the electoral politics has forgotten and abandoned. But we are here, time and again, persisting, imagining the phrase, we the people. Well, generally agreeing with Butler's thinking, Mao Zahar argues that his idea of theater as assembly is decidedly different from Butler's as they got to the concept of will of the people as embodied in an act of gathering itself, showing only the fact that the body is there while maintaining the sense of the otherness of the other. Because, quote, theater is not only a social, this is Mao Zaha, theater is not only a social but always a self-reflexive practice, despite the fact that conventional approaches have been neglecting this. Theater is a paradoxical machine that allows us to observe ourselves while being part of the performance. It does not create an artificial outside of pure criticality, but neither is it able to lure its audience into mere immersive identification. Theater marks a sphere where things are real and not real at the same time. It creates situations and practices that are symbolic and actual at once. The social spheres, the assemblies it can create, offer the possibility of being part and at the same time watching oneself from the outside. Blech's alienation effect is not an invention. It is a discovery of what constitutes all theater. Just not all theater admits it or even tries to make consequently use of it. The end of quote. In other words, Mao Zaha says that theater is essentially a liminal assembly practice with self-reflexivity as a key, but there are not many contemporary theater practices that presupposes or aspire to acknowledge this. This is because traditional theatrical performance and their conventional approaches ignore this aspect and that is why Precht had to voice it. That the key here is the concept of participation, which Mao Zaha continues, has become a th real issue in our time. It is not only art in contemporary participatory art within the categories of our SEA, but also uh, participatory theatre, the numbers of which is increasing at least in Europe. This is quotation of Mazaha again. Without the will and use participation, there is no assembly. That's, I already quoted that here, uh, which was... Where Sorry, it's not coming. Uh, just go. Uh, we, I, I was just reading really like, Without the will to allow and use, there is no assembly. And yet, that, what does that even mean? This is new. And yet, what does that even mean in a time where we are permanently forced into putative participation within an all-inclusive capitalist system that has rendered the term almost useless? A pacifier which perversely delegates the responsibility for what is happening to citizens that cannot influence it, and thus enables the system to continue more or less undisturbed in its task of self-maintenance. The end of quote. Mazaha says that for those of us who have always, always, uh, always, always been part, already always been part of the capitalist system where participation is allowed only as a consumer, the question naturally arises uh, of whether participation is possible as a non-consumer. The question is not a false participation of placebo involvement, but how we can create a theater of participation as Butler's sense of assembly. Maza has citizens during the kind of recently popular performances that seem to shed a critical light on social issues only end up within a vicious cycle in which false participation uh, cons consciousness makes you realize that you are partly responsible for the problems that are occurring, but because you can't actually change anything, you can only get involved in the continuation of the system that is at the root of those social problems. Instead, Mao Zaha asserts that the proper way to participate has to include the possibility of participation in the process of shaping of the future society. Uh, his, in his word, the uh, quote, participating in the powers that be. Two, from theater assembly to theater commons. I start to get very interested in Mao Zaha's theories of theater as, as assembly because an actual assembly was being held in Scene Asia Workshop and Assembly Project in Theater Commons Tokyo, TCT, hereafter. 
was in, uh, from February 22nd to March 11th in 2018, considered to be one of the most advanced exploration of the possibility of theater practice in revising and reinventing the form of theater itself and of performing art festival. When I was trying to figure out what TCT 18, the, uh, the second instrument or uh, installment of TCT was all about, what was its underlying theoretical and philosophical foundation and implications, Mauser has theater as assembly so naturally came to my mind. As So Machiaki, director of TCT writes, this is the quotation. Those who have the privilege of a platform to speak from uh, impose their overflown language, overblown language and grand gestures upon us, simplifying and polarizing our complex world. It's not, she's not only talking about Trump. And so in order to see the world in all its complexity, surely we must go to the other way and commit to expressing ourselves subtly which anyone is capable of doing. As a result, we can disrupt the boundaries drawn with sweeping gestures, again, sweeping gestures, and see the nuance in the world. More than ever, we need theater, theater ads that perform those functions, the end of quote. But she continues quite impressively for me, for those including myself who care about the notion of theater as assembly. Theater Commons Tokyo is conceived as a project to present ways, modest, effective ways of seeing the world in all its grandiose gradation, its gradations, see the world in its all gradations, while returning to the origin of theater, or theaters. As its name suggests, it harnesses the common or collective wisdom of theater, restoring the theater as a collective space to the heart of society. It is too small to be called a festival, too disparate to be called a theater. At first glance, it may appear to be no more than a bunch of performances, screenings, workshops, lectures, and dialogues held in one part of the city. However, once the sum total of experiences they generate is given the label, Theater Commons Tokyo, the project becomes apparent, the end of quote. In the first quotation, Soma's original phrase is lost in translation. Its literal translation would have been theater as apparatus, that she says performs those functions. I want to paraphrase it as a Malzahian theater as assembly because for me, TCT 18 emerged as an attempt to reclaim what Soma calls the origins of theater or theaters. In the meantime, Mao Zaha says, this is uh, again is a quotation, the way the theater is conceived as a public space that gives room for radical imagination as well as pragmatic utopias are manifold <laughs> and not seldom contradictory in their aesthetical as well as their political positions. But what unites them is the aim to expand the field of theater, to push its means and possibilities, to find ways of engaging with the social and political issues by our, by our time, and by this also giving inspiration to activism and political thinking beyond the artistic realm. The end of quote. Mao Zaha here is apparently speaking from or in Germany where the public theater or municipal theater culture or cultures has taken a stronghold in its sociocultural soil. Insisting quite rightfully that the quote, the way theater is conceived as a public space are manifold, the end of quote. He takes up some recent cases which he considers as a potentiality as a theater as assembly. For instance, this is a uh, from general meeting, Mio Rao, who is making all sort of scandalous um, uh, news in Ebu here in recent years. And I just saw the, uh, his Congo Tribunal, which was quite, I think you should have a chance. We ha really have to see that, see that film. Uh, and general meeting, a show in, in Berlin, in which, quote, 60 delegates from all over the world have gathered to, to debate this is the quote from the homepage, to debate on where we stand as a global community and what needs to be done socially, ecologically, technologically, politically, within the aim to create a charter for the 21st century. And this is um, Artist Organizations International. This is 2014. This is just for the, uh, the, 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 the website. Uh, and in the Florian, Mao Zaha was, was a dramaturg for this, for this project. This was a pre, uh, project devised by John Stahl, Joanna Walzer, and Mazaha himself for the How, uh, uh, the, the How Theater in Berlin. It 
to, uh, brought, brought together 20 representatives of the organization founded by artists to work confront today's crisis in politics, economy, education, immigration, and ecology. It explored the current shift from the artists working in the form of temporary projects to building long-term organizational structures. The end of quote. And this is Rimini Protocol, World Climate Change Conference 19, 2015. Quote, generally follow the concept and rules of the Official Nations Framework Convention in Climate Change 21st Conference of the, uh, of the Parties, COP21. 670 audience members represented the 60, 670 members representing the, the 196 uh, participating. This is the simulation of the COP21 uh, for inviting the audience members to, to think through what actually happened in COP21. And this is the theater, the negotiations by uh, Bruno Latour, who is recently who you know, came up with the interesting idea of the actor theory, actor theory, not in the theater theory, but actor theory. He's a science, uh, science philosophy, science philosophy guy, but he is now interested in making performances. Um, and he was collaborating with the other directors, and so this is the, what he did. Inviting some 200 students from all over the world and many more spectators, this simulation of the international conferences mainly aimed at creating visibility, was about including in climate negotiations those entities directly Im impacted by global warming. Indigenous peoples, young people, forests, oceans, endangered species, imperial territories, but who have no possible way of having their voices heard. This is uh, the quotation. So this is, uh, again, is the simulation uh, made in, it, it's a fiction, but it's not a fiction. It's real and it's not real at the same time. Those are some recent examples of theater as assembly by Mazaha, who, for some of which uh, actually Mazaha is very critical of, as no actors, often those who are affected, well, I'm not really sure if I should use the word stakeholders. Stakeholders seems very sort of, I don't know, it kind of sounds very political, economical. Uh, and in Japanese, there is a word called tojisha who is implicated in it. And so now, because there is no uh, English translation for tojisha, so there is a, now the uh, academic discipline called tojisha studies. Uh, it's not stakeholder studies. I don't think that stakeholders should be studied. So whoever is affected by, by you know, by the, the uh, post, uh, post capitalist, post industrial predicaments, uh, or who actually was traumatized by the, by the, by the tsunami or whatever. So, uh, uh, so these are the, uh, you know, that's happening. So, the, uh, one way or the other, yeah, real politicians, real art, uh, Mazah has for the, uh, the how, pro, uh, how project was real art organizations were gathered and they have to be actually discussed in a fictional manner, but actually some of them will be taken up later, will change the, the, the entire climate of the art, uh, art organizations uh, surrounding, uh, happening in Berlin. And so these people are called into the theater and or even onto the stage, thereby in some cases making it possible for them to explore the possibility of actually transforming some of the specified predicaments of the late capitalist society. They may not necessarily make use of what Soma calls overgrown language, but many of them, these projects seem imposing or at least res resorting to grand gestures of taking up seemingly global planetary issues very sort of Eurocentric idea that they are leading the world. Furthermore, there are some occasions Mawazaha calls pre-enactment, pre not re-enactment, pre-enactment, in, instead of re-enactment in which a possible future political movement is rehearsed, which if one context goes wrong, may be taken as mere boasting or uh, self-grandization. In Japan, where such grand scale theater as assembly projects are anyway not possible, because of its historical conditions and social cultural context, if we are to assume that theater assembly is in the first place, quote, to see the world, this is Soma, to see the world in all its complexity, surely we must go to the other way and commit to expressing ourselves subtly, the end of quote. Then from there, we should find various ways to materialize Maruzaha's theater as assembly, theater as a public space where there is room for radical imagination and pragmatic utopias, or theater as assembly. 
So I was going to introduce Soma, but I, I, I don't think I have time. So you will, I will uh, sh just skip that part and go to the third. Theater Commons Tokyo 1718. And I, so the 17 was a kind of preliminary stage that Soma lost the festival Tokyo and the, the, the funding was very difficult for the first, uh, uh, first installment of the, the idea of the theater commons. So it was very, not really that clear what she wanted to do. So, but all these sort of um, uh, seed were sort of planted in different places. Uh, uh, and, and, and so I will mainly talk about the uh, uh, TCT 18, uh, the second one was the first occasion for us to get a real glimpse into what Soma's call, call, Soma calls her project, that if you actually go through everything that she curates, you will see what she's getting at. It was the first occasion for me to sense what Soma means by the word, that project, which the sum total of the experiences participating works generate. In other words, all the presentations were stealthily authored, or more properly put, dramaturgically interwoven, to be there for the audience members to experience and be asked to articulate on one's own while going through different status of audience, viewer, participant, subject positions. TCT 18 was a very well ventilated program that had nothing to do with overgrown language, of course, while it expanded the scale compared to TCT 17. In fact, various discontinuous fragments constituting global gradations scattered around the world were transformed by participating artists' radical imagination, to use Mao Zahar's word, into works, actual works, or tangible works, and by meditating, or no, mediating the physical uh, conceptual experiences of participation in various modes, the programming was made to give the audience a glimpse of pragma, pragma, pragmatic utopias, but an opportunity of self-reflexivity through non-coercive intellectual and affective pathways and circuits. The only uh, that has a resemblance of conventional. Theory. I'm going to just introduce some of the works that was put there, and to see this is uh, from uh, uh, Theatre Commons 17. So this is the uh, the, the viewing of the Port B Takayama Akira's project in Taiwan. Uh, this was done in uh, lecture performance style, and uh, Chin Pom did what called Chin Pom Theatre, but it was mostly the retros retros uh, retrospective their work. And so this is TC 18's Beckett's Happy Days. Looks like very conventional, uh, I mean Beckett's. Uh, that which seems to allow us to be a passive observer of the performance, seems to have been. But it, it didn't happen in a traditional theater space. It was put into a very unique space called the former Noguchi Room at the Mita campus of Keio University, Tokyo. It is, uh, it's resigned by the famous uh, 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 artist Isamu Noguchi and Yoshiro Taniguchi in 1951, soon after the war, and was relocated uh, via Kuma Kengo's new design in 2005 at the top of the floor of one of the Keio University's campus building, as a mysterious house, as if floating among the buildings of Tamachi area, Tamachi is the, where the campus is. According, this is the we website, I'm just quoting. In this unique space full of signifying sighing and sensible and sensitive gradations, where intimacy and strangeness coexist, conventional theater concentration on the part of the viewer was kindly denied. This was site-specific theater performance, not a conventional site-specific performance, in which the night view of Tokyo's high-rise office buildings through the window was inevitably visible, why, if you are watching the evening performance, if you are watching the matinee, you can actually see it because it's very bright. While the performance of the high quality Beckett play as a classic of the 20th century is being performed in front of our eyes. This process of simultaneous de-theatricalization and re-theatricalization of the space did not allow the spectators at the scene to feel at ease with the cliche of the theater audience. And each of us had to self-reflect and invent our own and particular physical and intellectual involvement with the space-time of the performance. <coughs> there are two film video work screens in a theatrical setting, 
The works were shown to the audience members sitting in a darkened room as if in a movie theater or in an ordinary theater space where a live performance happens, through those which works were originally produced as visual artwork, which assumes to be shown at an exhibition space and or within a white cube where the spectators are expected to watch and leave as they wish. Uh, the one of them is a Tempest Society by, by Bush, Bushra Hari, which I think was premiered in the uh, a documenta uh, in Germany in 2018. And <coughs> the other one uh, was the, uh, the um, other one is this, is the Pilaris Heterochronia by Fuji Hikaru. So these are shown in a very sort of in a theatrical setting, although of course the content uh, uh, or, or are very in, is, is very important. Uh, I don't think I have the time to go into the, to, into the details of that. But again, these are, uh, 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 you have to be a kind of theater audience to be there, and you are expected to see from the beginning to the end. Uh, that, not, that does not necessarily happen in the visual art setting. And uh, there are also uh, the workshops uh, that happened, and this is uh, Koizumi Meiro's The We Mourn the Dead of the Future, and which will be made into the uh, very interesting uh, 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 video, uh, video, video artwork for the, the TCT19. Uh, and, and so the, I wasn't really in the workshop. I was held in like one day, and it was very heavily raining, and I couldn't be there. But I will, if I have time, I'll come back to that too. Uh, because the, so there is a continuation, the workshop, uh, workshop but that, that is made into the artwork uh, in, in the next year's, uh, is the next year's uh, theater commons. And uh, also the work, there is another, another workshop for the kids, uh, for Hello Atmosphere by Artemis, or from Dutch, uh, Dutch company, Dutch artists. And, but I think lecture performance is, I think, is a very interesting uh, a, a, a sort of breakthrough for me, at least for me, that happened in, in the uh, thinking in, you know, in terms of theater assembly. Uh, and in, because of its formal diversity and, and in the context of Japan's performance cultures. And, Lecture performance format began in Anglo-American, this is according to Kyoko Yuaki, Yuaki Kyoko, in the Anglo-American countries in the 1960s and became a common form again in the 2000s for various reasons. The boundary with performance art is vague today, uh, but as Patricia Miller points out, we should not forget that there is an element of teaching in lecture performance. So there is always the, this sort of power, somebody's delivering somebody to, 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 to the listeners that uh, the, 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 the element, and of course, as Miller notes, since teaching as instructing implies institutional power relations, recent lecture performance works often include self-reflexive uh, critique of coercive structuring, dynamics of teaching structuring as well. And so at ACT, uh, Black and White Panda by Su Chia Wei of Taiwan, and Friends Let's Have a Break by Julian Cournet, from France, clearly involved a subtle yet clear critique of the form of lecture performance itself. Black and White was the first uh, lecture performance, I would just say LP, by Chia Wai, the first one, he has never done that before, a Taiwanese contemporary visual artist, and it was rather a straightforward historical lecture of China's so-called panda dis diplomacy. The events and circumstances surrounding the panda, sometimes even tragic comic, are visually presented as an ordinary lecture session accompanied by the material that appears to have been carefully researched and collected. The reason why the lecture did not become one directional was that a manzai of comedians, the Japanese form of uh, 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 stand-up comedy, or a comical performance of stuffed pandas were inserted ever so often. I cannot deny that the impact of the laugh was not so great because comedians were not too good in terms of making people laugh, but at least I could understand, they were, very newcomers, and it's, uh, the, I think it was a so much real attempt to find the comedians because she's a very high art person. She doesn't know anybody, uh, in, you know, in the, in the, so they, but she was able to find those very interesting, you know, young, uh, who actually do some theaters as well, but they were not really good. But anyway, but at least I could understand the concept of dislocating this artistic pa patronizing by Mao Zedong's all-knowing teaching moment, imposing of the sense of tutelage, 
was so curiously and methodologically evaded and deconstructed. Four nays, three, uh, three day long uh, lecture performance takes place in a relaxed mood and sometimes that we are, uh, lots of intermissions were there and we are uh, drinking some tea or soup and stuff like that. And although it is a light setting, the content is the history of art and beauty in the West and its metaphysics. Theater art, there, art that influences people's senses and changes the aesthetic consciousness itself and deeply related political consciousness that is the art as a transformative force of the world is politely told with the criticism of global capitalism and an undertone of the entire narrative and with an easy to understand metaphors with varying emphasis. However, Hirano Akito, the, uh, the guy on the right, is doing library performance as a simultaneous translator and interpreter to the audience, played an important role. He's physically there, of course, in the space, and does the supportly simultaneous translation from French to Japanese. However, he has the script. He stresses to Fournay, for instance, he doesn't translate all that he says sometimes immediately taking advantage of his opponent's lack of understanding of Japanese. And other times, simply reads around the prescribed text of the Japanese translation. This relationship is, is even Boke and Tsukomi in Japanese manzai style, it's a comic form, uh, which uh, influenced the teaching, teaching moment of the conventional LP is simply dislocated rather than internally criticized. Compared to the previous two artists who were supposed to be criti uh, quite pop in the first place, and their attempts to relocate it by inserting something else in each respective way, Morimura Yasumasa's LP, Nippon Cha Cha Cha, was paradoxically and interesting, uh, outstanding because it was an autobiographical uh, performance that surely faced his own history as an artist. In the first half of the performance, using a lot of visual images, he explains why he needed to perform General MacArthur and Emperor Showa, or Marilyn Monroe and Mishima Yukio within the unique political and cultural sphere of the post war Japan. The content and narrative are like a college class, even to the degree of being enlightening. Oh, we didn't know that. Oh, that was what happened in the 1950s. In the latter half, however, Murini Mura impersonates Marilyn Monroe in front of the mirror on the stage, and then he transforms himself in Mishima Yukio. The question inevitably comes to the surface as to how we can respond to Mori Mura's performance in this dramatic here and now and historical here and now. However, as you can see from description above, in TCT 18, this was the most usual theater production and somewhat paradoxically, we were convinced to be okay to stay as a passive theater audience sitting and comfortably and just listening and observing. The last work I would like to take up, this is not LP, this is a theater mixed up with the LP from Malaysia. This is version 2020, the complete feature of Malaysia chapter three by Mark Te and Five Art Center. And I have, who have seen this? Okay. And, but it was designated as theater, but it was indeed a creative hybrid of LP and theater performance. It was LP as in some part we are really being lectured and in some other parts, it was a theater performance through performance, although performance seemed to be acting as themselves, not enacting prescribed characters. So this is the, uh, the uh, uh, from, from the website. The departure point of this work was Wawasan 2020, strategic plan introduced by the Mahatio administration in 1991. The plan was to develop Malaysia into an advanced nation in terms of its economy, education, welfare, every other sector by the year 2020. So <laughs> every actor, people, so the young, they are talking about this, uh, the, the future that was prescribed long time ago. This is in, uh, to, uh, before Mahathir came back to power. So this uh, LP theater concerns Malaysia, which is gradually moving towards 2020, and its or rather was then in 2018, strengthening its control elements of dictatorship, uh, as they say, utilizing mixture of detailed research-based public statement of material and short performances that include much of the performance personal autobiography. Especially noteworthy was Fami Reza, uh, Reza, Reza, Fami Reza, who is uh, right there on the bottom of the right. 
who is responsible for the visual projection for the work, who stays behind the stage table as a DJ-like figure in the background. He's the only one who speaks mainly in Malay and talks about his study in the United States. He had participated in the massive protest against the government of Najib at the time and shows the video footage of his arrest at the time of Dataram uh, Putra, Dataram Square or Independence Square, where many national events are held and a new democratic movement called Occupy Dataram was happening. In this LP theater, through the video footage of Occupy Dataran, as a real battler-like assembly, and through the voice and body of performer Reza, who actually participated in it and talks to us in the theatrical here and now, and the alternative public space that actually emerged, as it were, was implicitly emphasized. In the general election held in Malaysia in July of 2018, as you all know, or contrary to the previous expectations, the first regime change in the history of Malaysia took place. Am I correct? Okay. Sorry, and it was, if, if, sorry if I'm wrong. It was a great, uh, very uh, big change. That that's what I, I uh, from what I hear. And it was an very former Prime Minister Mahathir who came to power. In this way, this LP theater was to be remembered. Other than Malzahian sort of pre enacted was not actually rehearsal uh, after the election in the theater as assembly. So these are some of the examples, and actually I was going to talk about TCT 19. I'm not really uh, ready for this, but TCT 19, there are some more sort of theater lecture performance in between, like uh, the Sankao. Uh, Benkar Teshua, well, I cannot pronounce his name, but tribal, tribal acts, uh, criminal tribes acts. And uh, there was Ogutu Murayas, uh, because uh, always we're running. Um, he's from Kenya, but I think he, he works now in, 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 uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, and, the, uh, and the birth of tragedy, a soul performance, which begins with the full sort of tragic figure and ends up with the, the, the t-shirts. So he, uh, and this is not, well, it's again lecture performance, theatre performance in between. Um, and there are lots of different types of, of screening of, this is the, uh, the Koki, uh, Tanaka Koki's uh, the video, the, 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 it's, it's not the video, it's a movie, the film was shown, but there was an actual assembly was expected, so the audience members entered the theater before the screening. Afterwards, we, everybody was welcome, not, you know, we, we, they didn't force us to stay, but there was lots of discussions after the, uh, the, after the, uh, the screening. And this, and this is the lecture performance about the music. Uh, this is no country music. And, oh, oh, uh, and uh, he's, he's everywhere, right? Rabin Mouwe's Order to Joy, but actually it was presented in the, in the first occasion was as a theater piece, but it was made, uh, Soma asked him to do it in a lecture performance format. And a new one is a reading performance series and it was directed by three directors and all the, uh, what was new about this is that uh, the audience members participated actually reading the different kinds of text. Uh, three texts. One is like, uh, the artist was Shima Takashi, and he uh, chose Pablo Picasso's Desire Caught by the Tail. And Nakamura Yuko chose Susan Sondag's Alice in Bed. And these are not actors, they are the participants. And Hagiwara Yuta chose Ota Shogo's Sarachi, Vacant Lot. So this is a kind of a new um, testing of uh, the different ways that the audience can participate uh, in the process of performance, although they are not, uh, they are not, you know, they, don't, they didn't have to prepare anything beforehand. So the TCT 19 was a logical extension of what Soma studied in TCT 17 and 18, the development of various LPs, as well as the performance of plays and video artworks in unique forms have developed further in 19. Uh, TCT 19. The diversity of the themes they dealt with, as well as of forms, ways, and channels of the audience participation, keenly reflects Soma's philosophy as a dramaturgical festival director who is responsible for the sum total of the experiences they generate. The sum total was for formal experiment to materialize Soma's statement that, quote, in order to see, again, this is, uh, I'm quoting this so many times now, in order to see the complex world as it, as it is, isn't it necessary to put a small gesture that everybody can put on and take off into their bodies and thoughts? 
the end of quote. And one minute left, but I think this is, I think the, uh, another, this is a, a little bit, um, I put the finally this quotation of uh, Eka Fischer Lichte, and I think this um, notion or image of, you know, of interweaving performance culture seems to be, I mean, you know, it's, it's probably again Eurocentric and the, all this sort of self uh, critiquing uh, notion of these things may not uh, uh, do any good to our ways of thinking. But I think this is a very good image of, of what is happening, uh, or what should be happening in, in performance and theater making. I'm just gonna read it out. I, I'm not really sure if you, this is from, of course, it's the extension of all this, uh, the notions of inter, uh, inter, uh, inter, hmm? interculturalism, which was heavily sort of bombarded in the, for the last 20 years. Many strands are piled into a thread. Many such threads are then woven into a piece of cloth, which thus consists of diverse strands and threads without necessarily remaining recognizable individually. They are dyed, piled, and interwoven, forming particular patterns without allowing the viewer. Well, she uses the word the viewer because she's, you know, she's an academic. She says, she thinks that she's the audience and that status is very fixed. But I can say without allowing anybody the, the, those artists, uh, the dramaturgs, or the spectators, whoever they are, they trace each strand back to its origin. On the other hand, a process of interweaving does not necessarily result in the production of a whole. In it, mistakes, errors, failures, and even small disasters might occur when unintended knots appear in the cloth, when threads unravel or flow apart when the proportion of the dyes is off or the cloth woven becomes stained, the process of weaving is not necessarily smooth or straightforward. Okay, thanks for listening. These are references. Thank you very much, uh, Tadashi. That's uh, a lot to think through, but its weave is one that I hope we can begin to engage with gradually. We don't have that much time, but I think we can take 10 minutes into the break so that we have at least 20 minutes to respond and um, raise questions, if not offer comments in a range of ways. I'll start the ball rolling by saying that one of the impressions for me is how this suggests that the festival is pushing for new literacies in attending festivals because you talked about how the audience is expected to attend everything but not necessarily, but there's a kind of expectation when the festival is put together in order for it to be generative. And it's almost like the program is a curriculum. And as an educator, that strikes me as one of the things that we, we need to take on board because then certain kinds of literacy are obviously being emphasized. And when you then led to the idea of the lecture performance, it's very overtly pedagogical, right, in its attempt to enact and this curriculum as a pre-enactment of where the pedagogy is supposed to lead us. So if you could say a bit more about how you think this idea of assembly, uh, which is a form of, you know, schools have assembly in the morning in this part of the world where everybody stands in front of the flag and sings the national anthem and that kind of thing. And they become kind of interrelated in a useful as well as a troubling way because schools can be very problematic. Uh, um, I just, so I don't really have any proper, proper answer for that, but it's, I'm just observing that this is happening at the moment that Soma ex chose this way to, to go forward uh, with, um, 
with, she is always conscious of what is happening in, in continental Europe. So she is not, even in Foreign Festival Tokyo Day, she decided not to only invite the, the finished work, but co-creation. And now she's again is always uh, 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 talking with the artist how to actually present, if, even if the work is already there. She's uh, discussing with the other colleagues, but she's not the dictator, so there are lots of other members as well, and discuss how to present the work. Uh, and I don't think she has anything. She's not manipulating the audience to be somebody. Um, and she is not interested in, uh, in a kind of classroom. She's not interested in, in actually uh, leading them to somewhere. So the notion of assembly is very far-fetched, but of course the assembly in the Butlerian sense is that each individual, each sort of individuated bodies may appear together when something critical happens in, in the case of emergency. Um, uh, not necessarily probably connecting to the revolutional movements like before, but something is going to be said about what is happening there and might or might not change the world. And, and so she's in, uh, trying to let the audience be to think on their own, which is very, very much forgotten in, in Japan where the popular entertainment immersivity is everything. You go to the theater because you want to forget what is happening. Yeah, thank you. Other responses, questions from the floor? Hao Nian, then Janet. Mike. Hi, sorry about that. Uh, carrying on, actually just building on Charlene's question and also uh, the response, I also can't help but feel there is a very strong pedagogical leaning because as Professor Tadashi pointed out also that there is a very big element of the lecture performance at play. Um, even though there is this urgency of the assembling of the people coming together, people of, uh, we the people, right? But there is also this, it feels as if the element of wanting to not just communicate aesthetics, messages, issues, politics. There is, I don't know, uh, because the format of the lecture performance does have very strong pedagogical implications. There seems to be wanting, the, the classroom environment does come into play in the mind when looking at just as a snapshot of what has been presented today. Uh, and I guess the question for me is then uh, the agency of the spectator to take what they want to, but it probably feels now that uh, uh, the artistic director has a very, what's the word I'm looking for, strong uh, mission to want to really drive it through that this is a learning experience. I would just like to hear a comment about that. I'll just continue from you. Yeah. Can I just continue from him? Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious because the first set that you showed, uh, theater as assembly, as in taking up activism kind of topics and um, mirroring the kind of assembly which is a kind of a formal political assembly. So I find it interesting that, you know, a certain kind of activist activism uh, that then picks up that kind of uh, framework of the political assembly and replicates it as assembly. And then there's this, this lecture kind of system I mean, lecture performance, which is picking up another kind of format to, to say something, but through the performative. And then there's the, you know, Fami Redza's, uh, uh, what was it? Not, not the DJ, the, the assembly at Merdeka, the Occupy, picking up the Occupy kind of format. And these are all assemblies, actually 
and it's interesting that festivals uh, particularly in Japan, they are dramaturged in such a, such a way, not just this city festival. I consider the Tokyo festival a very city festival. So the kind of things that appear in this assembly in the Tokyo festival uh, are a certain collective of formats. Whereas if you look at the, the Satoachi festival or, or one of the visual arts festivals in the rural areas, the assembly is quite different. It's a, it's a different kind of assembly that fits that environment. It's not an urban environment. And I never thought about this. So it's just a comment that it's really interesting how theatre people are sort of looking beyond their, their works, or rather the dramaturgs, the bigger dramaturgs. Uh, again, better don't use the word meta. <laughs> but they are, they are looking at ways of pulling themselves and having a bigger voice. Yeah, I think the, uh, the Tokyo uh, the Theatre Commons is not even a city festival. It's a very small world festival, Minato, Minato World, one of the... Uh, so it's very, the, the target is very obvious. Although I was saying, because the, uh, the, she has been uh, the, the artistic director of the big festival, Festival Tokyo, there are the flowers, and uh, I, I put the word politicized used in the, uh, 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 in, in the, uh, the short, short that uh, the English word is not coming. <laughs> it's what I was going to speak in the, in the program, but it's, it's particular ways of gathering different, you know, particular target audience is quite obvious. Uh, the politicized I mean, uh, middle class, very well informed intellectual uh, through probably other university students who know what, what she's trying to do. So they, and, and, and so that is a kind of assembly, but that is not, um, I, I said politicized, in, in, at least conceptually, or at least they, in their mind they're politicized, but they are not mobilized. At the moment, I, I, that's what I, I, from my point of view. And so it's, you know, it's uh, uh, to, to, to give them a kind of political mobility uh, and the mobilization of these middle class is really, cute. I don't know, Soma is not, I'm not really sure if she's such a politicized person or not. But it's, it seems like she's saying, to, you know, moving gear towards those, mobilizing the middle class uh, from, from the, the letting them out of the self, uh, of the closure of the self-complacency of that. We are okay because Japan is fine, which is not true, but. Oh, sorry, Juliet, I saw the wrong hand. Oh. Hi. Um, my question is kind of regarding your point about how theatre and as assembly um, pre present possibilities for rehearsal for certain types of political future or political action. Um, not having attended any of these kind of um, performances that you've mentioned, I'm kind of curious from your perspective, to what extent is assembly actually just used as an image or a, spec like a spectacle type of gesture? for people like us who do not actually participate to see and say, oh, that's interesting, they're enacting this kind of rehearsal, they're enacting this kind of mode of participation. To what extent do the people who turn up actually have the option of answering back, actually have the option of pushing back, of rehearsing political like agency in this, in this case, to answer back to the person who is enacting this theatre and in creating this environment for them, um, yeah. And I, I haven't really seen all of the, the, the examples from your, the mouth that was actually was taking up, but in those cases actually, that has happened because there is no distinction between the performer and non-performer, they're all participants. In the senses that, uh, the assembly of the, uh, the climate change and all those things. So, and so they are very strong in a really mini protocols case. It's rehearsal, but again, it's about the COP21. So this alternative ways of that thing which already happened in the past. And so the, the learning process for the participant also trying to figure out, you know, to, 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 to think through to the future, the next COP20, COP I, I don't know what it's gonna be called. So it's, uh, so in Europe that it's possible because theater, as an institution um, is 
operating <laughs> due to at least to some classes, uh, some class of the society. Uh, I've not used the word middle class, but I don't know, but it's just that. But in the case of like intervention, uh, Congo Tribunal, did you, anybody have seen the video, Congo Tribunal, uh, that Mio Lao actually went into Congo and you know, researching, actually meeting those people who had something to do with the massacre of the village. And they actually did fictional tri tribunal, but actually everybody is real. And real result was that, that the, uh, the minister who was responsible for the massacre, who actually oversaw that the police were overlooking, they were there, but they didn't intervene. And that was a witness, uh, there was lots of witnesses about that. And I'm not really sure why it wasn't intervened or stopped by the, the, by, by the authorities. But it just went on and the minister was actually fired after the tribunal. So it had the, uh, the real effect. Although it's, I don't know if it's really, you know, it's quite tricky that all these authorities are letting uh, this, uh, the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs be on stand, being criticized by all the people although this is fictional, but so a kind of a you know, possibility is being thought out on those kind of European kind of theater as assembly. Uh, but that's not really, you no, know, it's not very possible in, 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 in Japan. Activism, activism, activism and art practices are not really in good relationship, at least for my generation. Uh, you know, for the, uh, the activists, art practices are usually being looked at as a dubious, uh, you know, at, at, at the best dubious uh, uh, things that why, like the Kensen uh, was trying to do this uh, comfort woman issue in Japan. Um, it was successful in, uh, in Victoria Theater. It was successful, uh, it was like 2000, but when he was trying to do it back to Japan, he was heavily criticized by the, by the activists. Why the Singaporean rich guy is taking us up uh, as, 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 as the theme, and you know, and uh, what, what has anything to do with us? And so he had to change everything into completely different format. Uh, sorry, uh, to may maybe I, I will say a little bit similar co comment. So, but uh, I am a, uh, I'm a critic and artist, so influenced by Chiaki Soma. So, i really inspired by her works, uh, her curated works. So, I think it means so her enlightenment tactics was successful. So, yes. So, enlightenment, yeah. So, I really enlightenment it, yeah. So, but, but we, uh, uh, the same generation or younger generation artists already started to another tactics. So they enter to community, community or social, yeah, blah, 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 so, so yeah. So I, I really love her works and really like, but, uh, mm, but we should always think about Assembly for what? Assembly for whom? Yeah, so always same people coming to theater, so that is why I already left theater, yeah. I, I have to introduce him, he's, he's Chikara Fujiwara. Uh, he's a, as he was saying, he's a critic, uh, slash, I don't think he's a dramaturg, a critic and an artist, and he's doing this very diff interesting, he goes into different places to do research, and he does the art, it's the, what is, is that the art project? It's, it's called theater, but it's called theater, theater quest. That you are given a, this game book and you are your own own to find out what is, you are ask, answering the questions in the TV, uh, TV game format. And when you are supposed to, but uh, what happens we don't really know, right? It's it, it different from, what time of the day we go there in these places. And, but this is heavily researched, but he does not really make it as a visible uh, uh, a production, but he put it in, in the book, game book format, which of course is a game book. It's a different, it's a questions. It's, so that's why it's called Engeki Quest. Uh, and so it's, he's quite right. And there are lots of different things that are happening. Uh, I don't really know about the studio artists. He's the only one. There are lots of art projects. Uh, of, of like Seto or, or, or you know, uh, the, the visual artists are trying to do uh, different things. Uh, and art, visual art has a very uh, 
different status in, in Japan's cultural sphere because it's fine, it's institutional from the beginning. As I always say, there was the, uh, the Japan trying to westernize itself in, uh, in uh, the late 19th century. Was there was a national school for music, a national school for visual arts, but there was no national school for theater. So visual arts and, and, and the music are nationalized from the beginning, and the you know, visual art uh, uh, section of the National School of the Arts was, was, uh, was opened by Kenshin Okakura, so he first decided not to do anything Western as a, as a gesture against the colonial, cultural colonialization. But, so, so they became the University of Tokyo University of Fine Arts, but, but there are lots of, it's institutionalized and it's, it's all there. That's why there are different projects and there are lots of money and they are finding ways to go into the local cities to do different projects. But he, there are, is there anybody, I don't really know who is working in, I mean, there are lots of people actually doing in community theater because theater is a collective, uh, manifestation or whatever you know, they, 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 they stand for or represent. So there are, it's, there are lots of you know, different community theaters in all around the world, all around Japan and doing its own thing. And uh, I think they are trying to network all these local community theater works. But it's all theater, theater, theater works, yeah. We have time for one final question or thought or comment. Sure. Sure. Um, I, I just kind of feel that um, I'm not a dramaturg or artist or a director. I kind of work more in production as a producer and behind the scenes. And I think that this kind of movement towards like theatre as assembly or assembly as a political or performative gesture can sometimes be very danger dangerous and troubling, especially because when there isn't sufficient thought or time given to who is actually in the assembly or how this assembling is actually done. I've had to rush for, through too many open calls desperately seeking participants who are free at the director's will to show up and participate in this theatre as assembly thing. And then what actually manifests for the audience as a result or for the actual theatre when it happens um, is just this reinforcement of an echo cham chamber that is so lacking in reflexivity or lacking in awareness of the lack of diversity diversity within the room, that it, part of me actually thinks that it, it becomes part of a much bigger problem. It's, it's no different from any kind of like, you know, right-wing assembly or, or a huge congregation of people fueling hate, for example. So I, I think that considering that issue in the creation and the production of theatre as assembly is, is really critical and I, that's why I feel that having it manifest as part of a festival that potentially has, like you mentioned, maybe middle class audiences or quite homogenous um, demographics, maybe that's not um, a very productive um, way and it serves the artist's CV a lot more than it actually does society or political progress. So that was my yeah, that's a very, I think it's a very, very good, but I think that what, so, uh, what I was quoting to Soma was that we really have to, we are fighting the retreat, retreat, we are retreating, retreating, and there is no, I mean, the homogeneity of middle class is not really visible, it's not manifested, they don't really know their homogeneity even, so it's, it's, it, it's very difficult to be inclusive. Outreaching, it, we, you know, we have been trying to outreach, whatever, outreaching, inclusive, has been an issue and we failed. And we are retreating to the, the it's not, in, retreatment, that's not retreating to, to where uh, the battle of the retreatment does not re consolidate the homogeneity of the middle class or the privileges of the middle class, but it's just to give them some kind of, of, of the collectivity to think over, think, think about themselves. And there's more to think about and think over. Uh, we have a 15 minute sort of inter break before the next session, which is another interesting session on dramaturgies of technology with our panelists talking about their experience and their approaches in relation to this. Um, just before I finish, I strongly recommend for those who want to continue thinking about this, the Florian Malzaker article, which is available online. 
all right? And it's part of a larger publication called Performance, Public and Politics, and it's examining a European condition, but nonetheless, there may be examples there and um, critiques there that respond to some of your thoughts and questions. Please join me in thanking Tadashi Uchino. Thank you.